<laughs> Take your time, my friend. We'll go ahead and get this get this party started. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, call to order uh, the June 22nd, 2021 meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, we have, a, I think, a full uh, list here tonight of agenda items, four items that we're tackling. We'll get right to it. Um, just uh, some, some brief uh, opening remarks before we get to our minutes from our uh, April 27th meeting. Um, I just want to welcome attendees to the meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, we're bringing the meeting to order now. This is a public proceeding. And unless the board specifically votes to go into executive session, you have the right to hear everything that's being said and to look at all the exhibits that are offered. Um, please let me know, Mike Valancourt, the chair, if there's if you can't, if you're unable to hear or see. We have some limitations uh, having, as we were doing this via Zoom, for what I understand will probably be the last time, uh, but it's, things have gone pretty smoothly so far. So please, anybody who's who's uh, listening in and participating, just let us know if there are any, any technical issues or considerations. Uh, we will con uh, consider the uh, prepared agenda, which has been published by the town in the uh, following order. I'll try to remember to do a roll call, which I almost never remember to do. We'll then uh, hopefully approve the minutes from the April 27th, uh, 2021 meeting. We'll, uh, we will tackle uh, new business as there is no old business. And those are the four uh, requests that I mentioned earlier. Um, and then uh, to the extent there are any communications, we can talk about those at the, at the bottom end of the agenda and then on to adjournment. As for new business being considered, the burden is upon the applicant to demonstrate compliance with the provisions of the applicable ordinance or ordinances. After the board votes on the merits of each project application, uh, we will as a board prepare a written opinion because the written opinion may substantially affect any appeal rights and also as a matter of courtesy, the board asks that those attending the meeting with regard to a specific project not leave until the board has taken the second vote adopting a written opinion. Uh, generally speaking, appeals from adverse decisions must be filed with the Superior Court, except as otherwise provided by law within 45 days of this board's decision. Also, to be certain that you preserve your individual right to file any such appeal as an applicant, you must be certain that this board's record, uh, record evidences your appearance this evening and the basis for your support or opposition of any given application. Again, please remember this is a public proceeding. You'll have the right to hear and see what is happening. And all folks speaking will be asked to first state their name and address or affiliation. Um, and again, as board chair and as board members, we try to be as, as, uh, as customer and citizen friendly as possible. So if there are questions, please do, do let us know as, as we proceed. Um, let's go ahead with the roll call. Mike Valancourt, uh, chair of the board. Mr. Caton. Yes, Matt Caton here. Very good. Uh, Kevin. Kevin Joss, present. Great. Michael. Michael Tatum Whelan is present. Aaron. Aaron Mosier, present. And Colin. Colin Powers, present. All right, and I, I note we have uh, Ben McDougall present, who is the town code enforcement officer. Looks like Carmen is is monitoring this from afar. I believe that she's uh, she's preparing a recording for us. Uh, hello, Carmen. Uh, let's um let's jump into the uh, the minutes from April twenty seventh from the April twenty seventh twenty twenty one meeting. Um, ben, Carmen, and the rest of the staff at uh, the town of Cape Elizabeth were good enough to circulate those minutes. Um, uh, a week or so ago. Uh, any any uh, comments on the minutes? Do we have a motion to approve? Any friendly amendments? Um, what do you guys have? I would move that we approve the minutes. All right, so moved by Kevin. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Michael. Uh, discussion on the minutes. All right, hearing none, all in favor of the approval of the minutes for April 27, 2021. Mike Valancourt in favor. Michael Tadamo Whelan in favor. Kevin Just in favor. Aaron Mosier in favor. Colin Powers in favor. Beth Kane in favor. Very good. All right. The, uh, the motion to approve the minutes from April 27th, uh, 2021. Uh, carries the minutes are approved. Um, moving down the agenda, we have no old business. 
we're on to new business. Um, ben, I'm, I'm just going to call these in the order that they're listed on the agenda, unless you had any suggested uh, change to the sequence. I, I do not. I uh, put these on the agenda in the order that they arrived at town hall and didn't necessarily see any reason to reorder them. Very good. Yeah, excellent. Unless, unless someone else feels differently, we can entertain that. Everybody good with the order? We'll go ahead and dive into uh, Richard Armstrong's application. Does that sound good? I'm seeing nods. Perfect. Okay. So uh, new business agenda item one is to hear the request of Richard B. Armstrong, owner of the property at Two Waverly Road, map U4, U4 lot 172, to enlarge a non-conforming single family dwelling based on sections 19-4-3.B.4 of the zoning ordinance. Uh, we'll give the applicant, Mr. Armstrong, an opportunity to speak. Uh, and prior uh, to doing that, uh, Ben, I don't know if you if you have any uh, initial comments for us on this particular application. Sure, uh, Mr. Armstrong came to me a couple months ago with a building permit to do a small addition on the side of his house at uh, Two Waverly Road. It's a non-conforming lot in the RA zone, and uh, that would have a 20-foot front setback, and uh, he's extremely close to that 20 foot front setback with his addition. And based on the site plan that he had, you know, it's within inches either way of meeting the 20 foot setback. I informed Mr. Armstrong that he would need a survey in order to demonstrate compliance with the setback. And we, then he called me back and said, surveyors were telling him six to eight weeks for a survey and asked if there was another avenue and I thought it would be appropriate here. Uh, it is a non-conforming structure. He's expanding a non-conforming structure. And the addition is either within inches of the front setback or it could be inches out of the front setback, but I think it's safe to be covered here this evening. Clarification, Ben, you said RA zone or is it RC? It is RC zone. RC, okay said RA, that was a mistake. No problem. All right, uh, thank you for that, Ben. Um, if there are any objections, we'll go ahead and uh, hear from Mr. Armstrong on his application. Mr. Armstrong, are you, are you with us? I, it looks like you're muted, Mr. Armstrong. Do you have me now? Yes, I can hear you loud oh, and clear now. Thank you. Good. Do you want a video? Yeah, why don't you put me so they know what I look like? I don't know how, how to do that. that. You, no, you, that's you can video if you want. You're not required no, to. No. We're always happy to put a face with a name. Okay. We're going to try to do it if we can. Okay. There you go. Gentlemen, I, I just want to thank you very much for your time to um, review our application. Uh, as uh, Ben had indicated, trying to get a surveyor today is really tough. So uh, you, I think you're a little short on that. We're telling me 12 to 15 weeks out. Hmm. But uh, anyway, uh, what we're doing is we're adding a very small addition, 11 by 13 to an existing room. Um, the way, if you look at the site plan that our architect prepared, she set that back a little bit. Uh, so you'll see how it, uh, that uh, uh, addition is back off the front line by about a foot and a half, two feet, something like that. So to make sure that we would be within the 20 foot uh, setback line. Um, as you can see, as, it, uh, as the uh, setback goes diagonally across the lot, we're going out straight. So we're, we're moving further away from the uh, setback line as we extend it out. Um, I don't have any more to add to that uh, other than uh, I appreciate your time and consideration on this. And if you have any questions you wanna ask me, I'd be happy to answer them. Very good, yeah, we, we will go ahead and uh, open this up for um, 
questions. I guess before we we do that, um, Ben, I know that there were there were a couple of emails that you forwarded along from uh, folks. I don't know that any of them related to this particular application, but a, any feedback that you've gotten from uh, from members of the public? I haven't had any feedback on this item. Okay. All right. Questions for Mr. Armstrong from from the board. And you're muted right now. So Mr. Armstrong, I've got a question, Mr. Chair. Yep. Yes. Um, so I'm looking at the, the, the diagram, the site plan, and it looks like this addition's you know, small compared to the size of the house. And it looks like the, the front side toward Waverly Road is actually set back further from the, the front line than right. the front right. of the house is. Okay. That's correct. And then it goes straight out. Right. And so there's a quite sounds like there's a question of that little bit of, of of new building right next to the existing structure might be we don't know exactly where it is. Exactly. That's, that's why we're doing that. But that was the purpose of her setting that back. If you'll note that doesn't come to the front line of the existing structure, it's set back a little bit. Okay. And can I mean not just not really seeing close closely looking at the interior plans. Is it practical at all to move that structure back six inches or a couple feet? No, because we have another, uh, we have a bathroom there and the structure and it would it would conflict with the bathroom. Okay. And it, it would kind of throw everything out of line. Okay, thanks. Yep. Yes, sir. Yep. Uh, hi, Mr. Armstrong. Um, very straightforward application. I, you know, I don't see any um, no no big concerns with the the proposed plan. I get my my question is um, where where did the boundary information uh, come from that is on the on the the site plan prepared by your architect? That was that was uh, obtained by us at at closing from the previous owner. Yeah. Oh, so is that a uh, like a mortgage survey that I believe it is, yes, which are notoriously inaccurate, uh, unfortunately. That's um, why I'm here, <laughs> yeah. No, I get it. Um, again, I, I, you know, I, I think it's a very reasonable request. I, it doesn't, it, you know, it seems to, it seems to check all the boxes that, that we need to look at. I, I just this is a this is kind of an unusual uh, <clears throat> ask um, from us, and Ben Ben knows uh, probably me more than other members, uh, or I more than other members really don't like to see applications without surveys. But I I, I completely understand how um, how backed up they are. I, um, I find that in my work as well. Um, but you know, I, I don't know. Maybe the, the you know, I just sort of toss this out to to the rest of the board. I I'm not even sure what we're um, being asked to approve. It, it's kind of a um, kind of a, a generic project with with very little information with respect to what we're being asked to uh, approve, which is the distance from the the property lines. So. Right. Um, you know, I, I guess that's the only, that that's what concerns me more than anything. It's just the lack of information. Ben, you got something to? Yeah, Ben, and I know Kevin's got a comment too. So go go for it, Ben. I I would just say that you know it, this does appear to be a non-conforming structure based on the information we have, and Mr. Armstrong is asking to expand a non-conforming structure. Uh, so, you know, do we, do we know to the inch how far it is? Uh, no, but it's, this isn't a variance. We're not, we're not giving a variance to further violate the setback. We're saying that a non-conforming structure can be expanded. So I, I understand that we usually require surveys. Yeah, no, I, I get it. I guess my, well, I think what makes this one a, a more unusual is the fact that the intent is to in, to meet the setback, <laughs> uh, the 20 foot setback with the addition. 
and in and if if it turns out that in fact the addition does meet that 20 foot front setback it, mr armstrong wouldn't need our approval at all right it, it would just it would just be a building permit that's right so that you know that's the that's the strange part to me it, mr armstrong maybe maybe i could ask a question what what's the is the schedule uh, are, are you trying to push this along um very quickly and well so you know it's it's we were going to try to get this done uh this spring but because of the the need to to, uh, to get a variance it, it has pushed it back and of course that gets uh it conflicts with our uh, contractor's schedule and material purchases uh window purchases and that kind of stuff so it kind of throws it back and we really like to have it my wife would love to have it before football season i, I she doesn't have to that. hear me yelling at the patriots right <laughs> which we might be doing a lot of this season right. I, you know. <laughs> well so you know if again i you know i i don't have any concerns with the proposal itself uh it's just with the lack of um, boundary data and, and location of the house. I, I'm just a, I don't know. It, it, I'm a little unsure as to how to proceed, but I, I'm happy to happy to hear from other board members on this. If you know, if everyone else is comfortable and can can explain to me how we we craft uh, you know our our findings, then um, I'm I'm willing to go along with it. Kevin, go ahead. Yeah, so so Mike, I actually have this, the same thought on the survey and, and was wondering if this was kind of perspective. But um, I mean, the way I sort of square that circle a little bit is the survey is still going to be required um, regardless. And so the downside is, and, and I, I believe, you know, this, this addition, even if the addition met the setback, if that original house has encroached on it, it's still an expansion of a non-conforming structure. So it would still require our approval for that. The downside is it would, it's Kevin. a conforming structure and it doesn't need our approval. And what all we've done is said, you know, and, and maybe we craft this in the findings, if it's a non-conforming structure, it's approved under this section. And if I, I it's a conforming ben structure, doesn't need it anyway. I think Ben can approve that addition, even, even if the existing building is non-conforming and the addition is conforming. Ben, can't you just approve that? Uh, Per that section, yeah. If that addition met the twenty foot setback, then that that would be a building permit that I could approve, even though the the existing house is non conforming. Right, but you know, if you're you're saying they're showing this in a conforming location on the plan, so if they moved if they move this addition one inch closer to the face of the house, you'd be comfortable approving it. <laughs> That's a very good question, Ben. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe you should have done that. <laughs> I would have, uh, I would have short circuited my my argument right away. <laughs> um, again, I, yeah, I, I guess I just I don't see the downside to to approving it, um, even prospectively. Matt Matthew, thank you, Jay. Just. Um, we were talking about some of the substance here and whether those are comments for the executive session and whether we should just focus a couple of queries um, uh, for the applicant. And the, the query is that I have for the applicant is, suppose that um, you receive permission from the board and um, at some later point it gets built and, and as the board member Kevin mentioned that the survey is, um, is provided and that the um, the new room is found to be non-conforming. It's not built where it's supposed to be. What then? Um, because the, the, the argument is that either you have to tear it down or remove the portion that, that's uh, in the setback. So there's a risk there. Well, I perceive there may be a risk here um, because what we see is that um, it's referred to as the site plan, but I'm not really comfortable to, to, to rely on it as to where the boundaries are and the setbacks are. And so in theory, it could be that um, this is not accurate. And so have you considered that as a possibility, Mr. Armstrong? Now, 
That, that, you just, are you addressing that to me, Matthew? Yes, I am. Oh, I thought you were addressing it to the board. Excuse me. No, no I had two points. One is that we were talking about um, substantive matters um, when you when we, uh, we should have been asking you for information. And then I wanted to ask one quick question of you is that suppose that this information is wrong um, or it's, as I say, it's a foot off or two feet off and you build the, this room. And what's the, what happens then? Well, um, I, the, the only way that I could, I could answer that is to say, you know, uh, we're doing everything we can to move it further back from the, uh, the existing house, which is non-conforming. We purchased, a, we purchased a, a property, okay, that was already non-conforming. We're adding in a direction that's not in the direction of the street. Okay, my, my, this is the way I, I, um, I think of your application is that we had a, a house um, over near the school and it was there for a long time. They measured incorrectly and part of the garage was in the setback. Um, and there was very little remedies available to the owner of that property. Uh, you chop off the portion uh, or you seek a, a, a things in agreement with the town um, not to be in violation. And so my, my thinking here is that that's the risk here. Could be remote, could never uh, come up, um, but you know, we are thinking about approving an application that looks great for football season, uh, but until we know where the lot lines are and the setbacks are, it's somewhat um, not accurate. Yep. Ben. Ben. I, I think this situation is a lot different uh, from the from the one you were speaking of, where where that one just came sh straight toward the street and needed a variance. Uh, I mean, the reason why this is here is in case this front property line is two, three, four, five feet erroneous. This this approval will cover that because I mean that was my fear when. Mr. Armstrong submitted the building permit. I said, well, mortgage surveys are, you know, notoriously a couple, two, three, four feet off. So if that happened, then this addition would be in the, could be in the front setback by a couple feet, but this approval kind of remedies the potential error that would be in the survey. Uh, he's got uh, tons of breathing room on the other side. So if they got the side property line wrong by 10 feet, he's got, tons of breathing room over there. Uh, so I, I, I really don't think we have a risk, uh, let's, you know, similar to the one that you're talking about. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just weigh in quickly. I mean, I understand, I completely uh, respect and understand uh, Michael's and Matthew's concerns about, you know, dimensions and having a survey. Uh, I, I almost got my tail in a crack, quite honestly, with the renovation that we did that thankfully it, it all worked out. Um, but uh, I, I get that. But I feel like if we're painting the strike zone here, uh, to Ben's point, it seems like there's enough wiggle room where, you know, we can safely, uh, safely approve this. So, but Mr. Armstrong, Matthew also raises a good point, which is, you know, if something is wildly inaccurate and it's happened before, it'll happen again. Um, you just have to understand that there's the possibility that you might be, you know, back with us or, or back with um, with some other folks with the town trying to figure that out. But uh, again, it doesn't look like that's going to be the case here. That's, a, I, I think, a, a risk, but not a, a substantial one. All right. Um, any other questions for uh, Mr. Armstrong? I want to then move on and, and see if there are other members of the public uh, who have comments. And Mr. Armstrong, we certainly reserve the right and frequently do uh, circle back to the applicants with additional questions or thoughts. Um, so, but before we get to that, any, any further questions for Mr. Armstrong before we, we go into the public comment um, part of this process? All right. Hearing none, um, you all know how Zoom challenged I sometimes am. Uh, are there any members of the public who want to speak on uh, Mr. Armstrong's application? I don't see anyone. 
Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't either. So, okay. Uh, I think we'll then move on to um, board consideration. Um, thoughts, motions, et cetera. Uh, Michael, your hand went up first. Yeah, I'll, I'll just, um, <laughs> I think we, <clears throat> we got a little caught up with at my fault, um, with, uh, things that have nothing to do with what we're supposed to be, what we're really asked to review here, which is, uh, is the setback, assuming that it is, um, closer than 20 feet to the front property line, does it meet the setback to the uh, greatest practical extent? Um, and it, you know, to me, it, you know, just for the record, I, I think it does. Um, I, I, I don't think it's going to have a, uh, a negative effect on any of the neighbors or on, I don't think it's going to cause erosion. Um, I don't think it's going to uh, result in um, uh, loss of substantial vegetation or anything like that. Uh, I think it's a, I think there's a strong argument to be made to approve it on those grounds. Um, and, you know, after hearing other board members, I, you, know, you know, I'm, I think I'm comfortable approving this, um, uh, whether or not ultimately it, it needs to be approved or not. And um, I'm not sure a survey uh, will be required at, at any point through this process. I know some members said, well, he's going to need a survey anyways, but I'm, I'm not so sure he will. I mean, maybe not a bad idea to get that surveyor um, scheduled and just sort of confirm what those final dimensions are, but I, I don't know that it, it would be required. Um, but anyways, I, I'm, I'm comfortable um, supporting this application going forward. Other, uh, Matthew. Yeah, I, I agree with Mike. Um, my reservation on, on where the, the setback is, it's not, I don't think, that the, the now. I think when the house is transferred, if you wish to sell, a survey is going to be required at that point. Um, hopefully, there are no surprises as to where it is, because that eventually, if there is a surprise, then it has to be resolved at the later time. Um, so I, I have, you know, um, I think the paperwork is enough to get there, and there's space on the side of the house. So I'm, I don't have an issue um, approving the uh, application. I, I do. I do agree with with Mike that um, you know, I don't. We can impose a, a survey requirement to to confirm uh, this if we chose to. I don't think there's any requirement at the moment unless we um, impose that. But I, I think uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, I think I think I'm comfortable proceeding on this uh, as is without that without that requirement in this circumstance in this in this limited circumstance. Thank you. Um, all right, so I would entertain a motion to approve the request of Richard B. Armstrong, owner of the property at 2 Waverly Road, map U4, lot 172, to expand his house based on section 19-4-3.B.4 of the zoning ordinance. Do we have such a motion? I moved. All right, Aaron, Aaron's uh, moved approval of the application. Do we have a second? We've got Michael as a second. Um, further conversation, discussion? All right. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion. Mike Valancourt in favor. Aaron Mosier in favor. Michael Tatama Wheeland in favor. Kevin Just in favor. Colin Powers in favor. Beth Caton in favor. Great. All right, so Mr. Armstrong, we've approved um, your application. Good luck. I hope the Patriots have a good season. We're going to run through the findings of fact real quick, really quickly. As I mentioned in the opening remarks, uh, we prefer applicants to stay on as we kind of hash through that. Should only take a few uh, few more minutes, and then you can uh, break out your hammer and nails and 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 get right to work as oh, okay. you with Ben going forward. I I, thank, I appreciate your time and your your thought on this. I know that's. Uh, I, I served on a planning board many years ago, and I know 
what you what you have to uh, come up with, and, and uh, uh, I appreciate your your thought process on this. Thank you. Well, thank thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, I will run through the uh, proposed findings of fact uh, to to wrap this one up. Uh, proposed finding of fact one: the property is a non-conforming lot in the RC zone. The property contains a single-family dwelling. Proposed finding of fact two: the existing house does not meet the front setback requirement. The owner would like to construct an addition on the side of the house. Proposed additional finding of fact one, the Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, the location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties, and the impact on views. Proposed additional finding of fact two, the proposed structure will not increase the nonconformity of the existing structure. Proposed additional finding of fact three, the proposed structure is in compliance with the setback requirement to the greatest practical extent. Proposed additional finding of fact four, the building reconstruction meets the setback to the greatest practical extent based on the criteria in section 19-4-3.b.2 and b.4 in the zoning ordinance. Um, I would, uh, Matt, Matthew, you have a comment? Go for it. I uh, just want to, can you confirm the, whether it's RA or RC zone? I missed the full sentence when we originally talked about this in the beginning of the hearing. I just wanted to make sure we have that correct. I think Ben confirmed RC. Is that right, Ben? Yep. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. So I would um, obviously always welcome uh, to, to take friendly amendments or, or unfriendly amendments. But uh, I'd, I'd uh, entertain a motion to uh, approve the proposed findings of fact and the proposed additional findings of fact. So moved. All right, we've got Kevin. Second. Michael, Michael is a second. Uh, further discussion on the proposed findings? Hearing none, all in favor, Mike Valancourt in favor. Michael Todd and Whelan in favor. We've got Michael and Aaron in favor. Kevin Just in favor. Colin Powers in favor. Matthew Caton in favor. Very good, Mr. Armstrong. Uh, good luck with everything. Go Pats. Uh, and there I'm, you go. I hope the project goes well. Thank you very much. And again, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. And well, should I be in touch with you, Ben? With the building permit? Yes, yes you should. Okay, we will do. Okay. Thank you. Thanks so much. Take care, sir. You too. Good night. All right. All right. All right. So we are on to, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, new business uh, item two to hear the request of Ann Hill owner of the property at 6 Crescent View Avenue, map U16, lot 54, for a variance to reconstruct and relocate a garage closer to the side property line based on section 19-5-4 of the zoning ordinance. Um, Ms. Hill, are you present? She's being represented by Mr. Danielson. Good evening, Bob. You're on mute. Okay, you're, you're off mute now. How are you? I'm great, Mr. Chairman. How you doing? Good, good, good. Doing well. Before we turn it, turn it over to you, we'll just get a quick uh, briefing from, from Ben on the application. And before you start, Anne is present at her house. I'm not sure if she knows how to get on. Okay. Yeah. And, it, it, and uh, Bob, if, if you need a little, if, if you need an opportunity to get her dialed in or anything, just, you know, just let us know. Okay, great. Yeah. Thanks. She's she's on with uh, I believe with her daughter Kate Thompson as, as an attendee and okay. uh, if they if if we want to go to them we can try to go to them if they raise their hand I'll allow yeah. them to come in as well. Okay, so she just needs to raise her hand, but um, I don't yeah I don't think that she needs to participate. It's just for clarification. Correct. Great. Thank thank you. Very good, very good. I see. I see. There we go. We've got we've got some Thompsons on the on the uh, on the screen now. So uh, before we move into the into um, uh, Mr. Danielson and as Ms. Thompson's presentation, Ben, if you would just give us a quick briefing on the application. Sure. This one is in fact a non-conforming lot in the RA zone, and uh, 
she has a garage that is non-conforming to the rear setback, just barely conforming to the side setback. And she's been having some trouble with the, the main door to her house and its proximity to the driveway. And in order to make the house more user friendly, she'd like to bump the garage over about five feet, the same size garage. Uh, these are, these are this, these are very small lots for RA zoning setbacks of, of 25 feet, uh, you know, 80,000 square foot zoning. And this lot is maybe, maybe a quarter or less. It's 0.21 acres. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a quarter acre in two acre zoning. So it's a small lot with, with difficult setbacks. Okay, and, and my my apologies, uh, Ms. Hill. I, I identified you as 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 Ms. Thompson. That was the name that popped up on my screen. So my apologies to you uh, for that in incorrect reference there, uh, Ben. Thank you for um, for that in information. Uh, and are there? Let me ask. Are there questions for Ben before we move into Attorney Attorney Danielson's and and Ms. Hill's presentation on the application? All right, I'm not seeing anything right off the bat. So uh, Attorney Danielson, if you want if you have comments on the application uh, and if Ms. Hill does, uh, I'll leave that to your discretion as to how you handle that. Okay, thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, in your packet is a picture, actually there's three or four pictures. One of them is a close up picture of the uh, porch and you can see that she can barely open the door with the railing and what she'd like to do is basically bump out the porch a little bit so that she has a safe landing uh, and add some steps. Cause, Cause right now it looks like it was just kind of crammed in there. And with the addition of the railing, it doesn't look like it's very safe and certainly it's not accessible or um, something that people can use with ease. So what she'd like to do is basically move the garage over five feet, uh, same size garage, same footprint, um, but five feet into her yard so that she can then create a safe landing on the porch for the house. Uh, the driveway is obviously there and she'd like to uh, keep the driveway on that side of the house. She also has limitations where else she could put it because the septic system and the leach in the leach field are on other parts of the house. Uh, and if you look at one of the other pictures, there's a generator um, right where the garage is going to go. She's already relocated the generator. Um, and there's some propane tanks along the rear, which don't affect the setback, but she's already relocated the, the propane tanks so they wouldn't be in the neighbor's vision. Um, basically, she's trying to deal with the practical difficulty of having that very, very small lot, which predates this setback requirement. Um, and we think that we've provided information that supports all of the requirements of practical difficulty. Would you, would you like me to outline those for you? And if, there's a, if there are any uh, questions, I'm glad to answer them. Uh, it really, um, it's the same size garage and it is a matter of going straight out the stairs and straight down compared to the picture you see that has stairs that angle out right next to the door. I hope that helps. Thank you, Anna. And, and uh, Attorney Danielson, I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll just circle back to you if we have particular questions about the, the, the prongs here, the, the various criteria. Uh, Great, thank you. Save you a little bit of, uh, of time and breath to the extent that uh, we have questions, we'll let you know. Um, Questions for um, Attorney Danielson and for uh, Ms. Hill uh, at the moment. Michael. Yeah, just a couple of quick ones, hopefully. Um, do, do, do either of you know when that garage was constructed? The, the lot was laid out in 1959, but I'm pretty sure that the um, Garage was constructed some years ago, and it's that's pretty rough shape, isn't it? I don't. I yes, the, yes, it is. I don't know when it was. 
I've been in the house for five years and I don't know um, much about it before then. Okay. Um, ben might, might be able to, to dig up some information on that. But my, my other question is, um, is this, <clears throat> Is, is this a request um, to to make the make the property uh, more accessible um, because the, someone living there has a disability or, or is this more a convenience um, issue and, and the reason I, I it might sound like a weird question but there's there's um, there is a provision in our ordinance that that um, allows us to grant variances um, for that exact purpose. Um, so Shall I answer, Bob, because it isn't for a disability. It's just a very awkward and unsafe kitchen entrance. And um, everything is just smushed together into small space, even for snow removal, for the people to remove snow or for shoveling to get out of the, it's, it's just a lot in a very small, space with no other solution other than to have the garage be farther over. Yeah, um, it looks, it, it, the, the pictures um, demonstrate that. So now I can appreciate that. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Uh, Kevin and then Matthew, I believe. Um, I just have a real quick question. The, um, the picture that has the garage with with the landing of, you know what, it's much, whatever. <laughs> uh, is the intent here to keep the porch and basically just have the stairs come off directly into the driveway or is it rebuilding some side of that kind of porch landing area? That little porch thing would be gone and straight stone steps coming down. Um, in the same location with the same- In the same, in the same location. Roughly the same footprint. Yes. There's a picture that um, the person drew up. There's a, a little bracket um, with an overhang over the door, but no more, no more small porch thing, just normal stairs going straight normal out. Stairs. Okay, great, thank you. That was all I had, Mike. Matthew, I think, I think you're up. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Attorney Danielson, I, I wanna to refer to the, the variance, the certificate of variance. Yes, have sir. a copy of that. Yep. Could you assist us in explaining the significance of the variance and how it applies to? I'm looking at the very large drawing where it has the proposed garage here mm -hmm. and the feet um, that's from the side set back over to the garage. Um, so the, essentially, there's three queries for you. The one is explain to us the significance of the variance. Second is how that applies to the drawing. Yeah. Uh, and this is still a registered document with the deed up at the registry. That, that variance is not for this property. That variance is for the property across the street. The, the property across the street requested a 13 foot variance for, to build a garage from a one unit garage to a two unit garage. And in 2010, the board granted the variance. The, the key part about that variance is that this neighborhood is trending on trying to improve all the lots. And there's a, there's a reference in that variance that there are more people in the neighborhood with non-conforming garages than there are otherwise. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to uh, bring their lots into conformity or have, have improvements that are uh, consistent with the neighborhood and the person who got the prior variance was kind enough to share it with us and said this is this is very typical of what's going on in our neighborhood and we thought that would be helpful for you uh, thank you that explains much um, uh, it adds a few wrinkles for us to consider uh, in a moment mm -hmm. or two thank you does that, that do it for now for you, Matthew? Uh, yep. Yes, thank you. Yep. Other questions for the applicant and attorney Danielson at this point in time, we've always reserved the right to circle back. 
All right, hearing none at the moment. Um, ben, uh, did you receive in, any additional uh, input or comments on this particular application? I did, uh, I received an email from Renee and Jim Lewis and they're at 8 Crescent View, they're a neighbor in support of the application. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, are, are there any other members of the public who are participating here this evening who want to uh, speak up and offer any uh, thoughts or input on this application? I, I'm not seeing anybody, but Ben, let me know what you're seeing there. I'm not seeing any. Okay. All right. Well, we will close this to uh, public comment. Again, we reserve the right to follow up with Attorney Danielson and Ms. Hill with, uh, for any questions. Um, but we as a board can now start our conversation about how we might want to handle this application. Thoughts? Matthew. Um, I'm struggling with the application. Um, just on a straight read of the ordinance. The problem that I have is the variance from the neighbor across the street or on the street. Um, you know, I'm more inclined to just replicate that variance because it seems to me that are we gonna say that one neighbor should have something that another neighbor should not have? Um, so I'm struggling with the variance that was provided in the packet. I don't have an answer by the way. Kevin. Uh, I, I see Matt went on mute, so I'm, I'm guessing he's done for, for the moment. No, I, 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 I'm, you know, we talk about this a lot all the time when variances come up. The standards for granting variances are extraordinarily high. Um, you know, on, on the kind of bare logic setting, uh, you know, this is they're looking at a, a setback that's still greater than 20 feet in an area where that makes sense, but that's not the zoning. Um, designation that's mapped to this particular neighborhood. And while I don't exactly, you know, think that our, our you know, I think we're seeing this on a lot of cases where our zoning ordinance maybe isn't as flexible as it could be or should be. The fact is we're not the ones who map the neighborhoods to the zoning ordinance that that was, um, you know, done elsewhere. And whether the RA designation is appropriate for this particular lot or this particular neighborhood is, is you know, outside of the scope of, um, you know, what we do and what this, uh, you know, variance request is. I, I, like Matt, looked at this certificate of variance and, you know, it, it was granted. It's, it's, you know, legal and lawful and it looks like it was done in the right way. Um, but I, you know, I, I, I struggle with how that applies to this particular request and the specifics of you know the the need for that variance outside of the very limited scope that we can approve that that um, you know Michael had mentioned a little bit earlier. Uh, I I, I want to try to find a way to get here. I'm not I'm not really seeing it yet though. Um, so again, I don't I don't quite know how to go on from that. But that's my initial sort of view here. All right. Thank you, Kevin. Aaron. Um, I'm not really seeing, seeing what the problem here is. Um, I think we've demonstrated, I think they've demonstrated practical difficulty or lack of it rather. Um, I think what they want to do is necessary actually, and there's no other way to do it. So I'm not really sure why we've been looking at the one across the street. I mean, it's great that they provided it as, I guess, evidence of Hey, people have done this in the past and in, in the neighborhood, but I don't see why we even have to look at that and why that I don't, I'm not sure why that opens a can, opens a can of worms. Uh, Aaron, what, what's the, help me to, to understand your point of view as to what's the necessary part? Well, I think looking at, as one of the members said, looking at the photos, um, that's, it's an impractical staircase that for safety reasons needs, should be made wider and made easier to maintain. And that renders the garage and the driveway, uh, renders the garage a little less useful. But the, one of the issues that we're gonna come up against is that this practical difficulty was created by a previous owner. Hmm. 
and that practical difficulty is stuck with the property now. Mm -hmm. uh, so how do we get past that? You know, and the garage is not being operational today. And, you know, it's a fit, you know, it's manageable. But what I don't like is that a neighbor has something that this property apparently should not be getting. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I, that sense of fairness bothers me here because I, why not? I mean, you know, you have neighbors supporting this neighbor, this applicant. Why not have the, um, the garage moved over a little bit? Okay, so the un in your view, the unfairness was created when the people across the street got the variance. No, there's two things. One is um, the house is built and it has an odd way coming off into the, dr the driveway. Um, when they're talking about getting a variance, it's not because of the, the act of the previous owner it has some unique set of circumstances. I don't see that here. What bothers me is that a neighbor with a very similar lot can build a garage, a two-car garage, as close as what the applicant is now seeking here. And so, but for an example of this variance, um, this should be a fairly clear application that there should be no variance. That, that's my thinking at the moment. Okay. Uh, Attorney Danielson, go ahead. Go ahead. If you if you read our application, it stands on its face as far as practical difficulty. The lot was laid out in 1959 as a small lot. How the garage got there really isn't material because it was placed on the lot where it was. The practical difficulty is is that everything around it doesn't allow her to have a safe exit from this kitchen of the house. Now what's there in existence now was right. It was smushed together and somebody said, oh, the heck with it, we'll just put where we can fit it. But that's not safe or practical. So basically you're forcing this lady to try to open a kitchen door into the snow with a railing that's about two inches away. And all she's asking to do is to fix that. Now we've outline the criteria of practical difficulty in our application. And, and I thought we did a pretty good job of indicating that there is trends in the neighborhood. There's uh, the uniqueness of this lot is smaller than most of the houses in the, and smaller than most of the lots in the neighborhood. It's only a quarter of an acre has been outlined. And for this person to improve their property, it doesn't make any sense to keep it in the same location because she's have the same problem with the access from the or egress from the kitchen. All, all we're looking at as, as an applicant is just the criteria of our application. We provided the additional variance as evidence that the town has granted similar variances in the neighborhood under similar circumstances. And the variance across the street was 13 feet into the setback. Ours is only five feet into the setback. And you can see from where the location of the septic is and the leach field, the generator and everything else, that this is really the only practical solution. It wouldn't make sense for her to put another garage where it is because she'd still be forced with driving her car past that deck um, that she wants to improve. I, I can't explain it any other way. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Michael. Mr. Chair, do you mind if I uh, ask some, some questions of, um, of the applicant or, and or their attorney? Uh, absolutely not, go, go right on ahead. Um, is there, so I, I, I like to just go right down through our, our uh, our review standards, and so uh, I, I actually think you've addressed um, the fact that the, the, there are unique circumstances on the property, and it's not the general condition of the neighborhood. Um, I think it's probably pretty clear that that the project will not alter the essential character of the neighborhood. It, you know, something as as minor as this, and it sounds like there's plenty of garages, and in fact, this lot has a garage. Um, you know what it, the practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or prior owner um you know obviously someone built a 
someone constructed this situation, which now is is a practical difficulty. So that that's one that we're, we're going to need to we're going to need to get around. Uh, there's no feasible, no other feasible alternative. I think you've made that argument. Uh, the garage doesn't really fit anywhere else on the property. Um, and it won't unreasonably adversely affect the natural environment. I think I think that's probably pretty clear. Um, <clears throat> when we when we get to we, we also have to look at um, at the the standard the practical difficulty standard um, talks about significant economic injury, and and that's defined as placing the applicant at a disadvantage in the neighborhood. Um, and it would prevent the applicant from having a structure or accessory structure comparable in size, location, and number to those of other lot owners in the immediate neighborhood, but in no case fewer than 10 of the nearest property owners. Um, is that, I, and, and I didn't see anything in the or, in, in your application on that, um, but but I may have seen that I may in fact have seen that information in the in the other variants uh, the, for the for the neighbor across the street. I, I think there was some of that analysis in there. Is is that? Um, That's yeah. my understanding that they documented they documented the neighborhood, and so I didn't repeat that work. Okay. So I, I can I can appreciate that. So I think that I think it's useful that we have this other variance for that um, for that information. Um, so <laughs> I know I just said a lot, and and, uh, and I guess I don't really have a, a, a I'm not really gonna. Um, voice, I guess, a, a decision right here. Again, I, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit with the, the fact that the pra practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or prior owner, because clearly a, a prior owner constructed this, which is can, now can, a practical difficulty. Can I, can, I, can I comment on that, please? Yeah, that, that's fine. That's fine by me. And then, and then I know uh, Ben had his hand up as well, but go for it, Attorney Danielson. Okay. The existing garage was built in accordance with what appears to be the setbacks that are required. So the, the practical difficulty is that the existing garage was smushed in there for lack of a better term. And all she wants to do is try to make a safe situation out of a situation that it isn't, it isn't non, I mean, it isn't that the garage is a bad garage right now. It's the garage, it doesn't have access, sufficient access to get to the kitchen. And, and we're saying that is a practical difficulty. That is something that she can't design anything that's going to change that by leaving the garage where it is. And the simple solution, which seems to be supported by the neighborhood and supported by the 10 houses and everything else, is that nobody has any objection to is to just slide the garage over five feet. It's not at increasing any impervious area. It's not affecting any wetlands, It's not affecting anything else, but it does solve her problem. And seemingly without any adverse impact to anybody else. That's, that's the concern that we have. Go ahead, Ann. I should, I should correct one thing. It is already too close to the back and, and just sliding it over, it wouldn't be any closer. It would be the same. Um, amount, same distance to the back. Thank you. All right, uh, thank you for that. Uh, ben, you had your hand up a, a moment ago. I did. The, uh, the setback in this zone in, in the 50s and 60s, and I believe up to into the, I believe in the 70s as well, was 20 feet on the side. Uh, so, you know, the practical difficulty could be the result of, of a zoning change. I, I don't think the, uh, when the owner built this, I don't think they knew the zoning was going to change. It was built, it was built prior to today's zoning. So, uh, I'm, you know, that, that could change the argument for that question C, uh, 
that when when they when they built this, the I, I believe when this was built, the the setback would have been 20 feet, and you know why they chose to put it there, no one can tell, but uh, they didn't know that zoning would change to preclude them from doing doing an expansion or a movement in the future. Right, and then and then the inclusion of of the um granting of the variance from you know years ago um i think we've all talked about this i think i'm just beating a dead horse is i think simply to establish that uh this would not alter the essential character of the neighborhood that it's in keeping with with you know what's been done previously um i saw kevin's hand go up i think yeah, I, I was just going to say, and, and sorry, I dropped off for a second uh, with some Zoom difficulties that we won't have next month. Uh, you know, on the practical difficulty side, you know, my thought is this house was, did we get a definitive date for when the house was built? Mid 50s? Was that what? It, it The lot was laid out in 59, so probably 60, 61. 60, 61. You know, what was sort of acceptable and accepted in, in maybe the 1960s uh, just through the passage of time? You know, I, I don't necessarily think what a prior owner did um, constitutes it. You know, maybe not didn't constitute a practical difficulty at the time, but now it does. And it could also change with the use of a house. I mean, there's a front door on this house. This is a side door, but if this is the primary door, um, that then again, it's a no fault practical difficulty um, in my mind. So that I, I think I'm I I'd be okay with that prior owner thing. Um, quick, quick question, just going back, um, Ms. Hill or, or Ms. Danielson, did, you know, if the garage is in acceptable shape, had you looked at prior to this, um, whether it was feasible to move that garage door and still accomplish what you wanted to with the, the side? Um, and again, I'm not suggesting that's something that would be done. I'm just curious if in your diligence, you had considered that uh, prior to coming with the variance request. There isn't space for the stairs to come out and have the 36 inches and then two stairs down. It goes right into the into the driveway. Does that answer that? Uh, but I, I, that, does, that answers part of it. But as I look at this, it looks like the proposed garage, um, that door is, is much further over to one side. And I was curious if you had looked at whether or not moving that garage door to the side would still get you enough space for that those stairs without actually moving the whole garage. The drawing has it farther over also for snow removal and and just to have have that space. But I I don't believe this space to alter the garage floor is past any kind of um, remedy and needs either a new floor or I mean, the, the floor is not functional and the driveway is higher than the garage floor. So water comes down into the garage. Other things to know, if that okay. helps. Um, I think yeah, I think it's a, it, it certainly, you know, adds, <laughs> adds to a fact pattern for consideration, so. <laughs> okay. All facts help. <laughs> Um, uh, one, sorry, one final question. The picture that has the generator, is that the generator as relocated or was there a further no, relocation? That was before. Yes. The, the generator and the propane tanks are now over on the north side of the house. And that's the side that has the leach field, the whole um, side yard. Um, yeah. So they're not there anymore. The back side of the house, correct? The back side of the house had the two propane tanks and the side of the house had the generator. And okay. the, um, the email is from the Lewises who are on that side. And that's where, the, um, that's where I'd be moving closer to. It would all just be a lot nicer. <laughs> Understood, okay, thank you. That, that's, that's the extent of my, my questions uh, for now, thanks. Thanks. Matthew. Chair, I just wanted to bring everyone's attention to the, the variance. And I must say the variance is I think is the key for this application. I know it's across the street or down the street. 
And uh, I just want to refer to people's uh, attention to the third page, uh, the letter C. And this is where we're talking about practical difficulty. And this refer, uh, provides, I think, precedent for Ben's point. Um, and I quote, this is a question to uh, practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or prior owner. And, and I quote, and this is underlined, uh, the law was created before the ordinance. And so the practical difficulty is not the result of any action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. Uh, close quote. That's a similar point that attorney Danielson was talking about when the layout of the law occurred. And I'm, I'm willing to let, you know, hang my hat on the variance as the basis to approve the application. Um, otherwise, I don't think there's, my, my vote would be no. I don't think they meet, the applicant would meet the application uh, under the ordinance. Uh, but I think because of the variance on that street, I think in these circumstances, there's, I think, a, a fair basis to uh, say that it could be um, uh, a, a reason for why it should be approved. I, I also take uh, Mike's uh, point earlier about the value of the property being different um, from the other um, properties in the street. So I just want to make that clear that I think that provides us some basis to um, to move forward with the application. And I, I agree, Matthew. I thought that was uh, helpful to know that uh, the dimensional requirements had indeed changed. Um, and I'm uh, I'm going to be comfortable supporting the application. Um, I don't know quite where everybody else is, but I'm going to go ahead and and make a make a motion, and then we can talk about it. Um, move to approve the request of Ann K. Hill, owner of the property at Six Crescent View Avenue, Map U16, Lot 54, for a variance to reconstruct and relocate her garage based on Section 19-5-4 of the zoning ordinance. Um, do we have a second? I think Aaron, Aaron, you're muted, Aaron, but I think you said second. Is that a second, Aaron? All right, good. Um, so we've got the motion. We've got the second uh, further discussion and consideration of the motion. Gavin. Uh, so I like everything about this application. I, I think it makes all the sense in the world. And um, my, my only issue, and I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to vote until I actually vote, I do feel like we're zoning a little bit by variance which i really really don't like i don't think that this, this i don't think the intent of the ordinance is to zone these whatever it's four streets i guess um the way that they're zoned and you know if we're if the town is looking at changing certain ordinances uh, related to zoning anyway i think this should be one of those that they look at uh, it, it makes me it makes me very uncomfortable that i feel like we're we're zoning by variance as opposed to um, uh, you know, a applying the ordinance in, in its strictest interpretation. Um, that said, this makes all the logical sense in the world, and I don't really feel like I could, in good faith, vote against it. So, um, that that's where my head is on this. I, ben? Yeah. I, I I agree with I agree with you, Kevin. I'm in, I'm in the I'm in the same place. Uh, I, keep, we keep talking about strike zones, and this is this is uh, I think just barely a strike for me. Um, ben, you, you, I saw your hand, hand go up. Yeah, just uh, for administrative purposes, Carmen and I bo both missed who made that initial motion. I know Aaron seconded. I, I, I just commented back to Carmen that I had made the motion. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Further discussion from the board on the pending motion. All right, I'm not seeing anything. So all in favor of the motion uh, to approve, Mike Valancourt in favor. Kevin Just in favor. Colin Powers in favor. Aaron Moser in favor. Michael Tatum Whelan in favor. Matt Kane in favor. All right. Very good. The motion carries. Um, and uh, uh, Ms. Hill, congratulations. What we'll do is I'm going to take a couple, take a couple of minutes. We need to go through some proposed findings of fact. We ask that the um, applicant remain on on the line just in case there are any any questions that uh, come up as part of that process. 
Um, but um, uh, I, I think this is a I think this is a good result. Um, none of us really love the, the the variance game, I know, but I think this is uh, an appropriate um, use of that tool here. Uh, I'll run through the uh, proposed findings of fact and proposed additional findings of fact, and then we'll uh, we'll let you move on to the rest of your evening. Uh, proposed finding of fact one: the property is a non-conforming lot in the RA zone. The property contains a single family dwelling and detached garage. Proposed finding of fact two, the existing garage is 25 feet from the side property line and 14.1 feet from the rear property line. The owner would like to reconstruct the garage and move it over five feet. So it will be 20 feet from the side property line and 14.1 feet from the rear property line. Proposed finding of fact three, no part of the property is located in the Shoreland Overlay District. Proposed additional finding of fact one, the need for a variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions of the neighborhood. Proposed additional finding of fact two, the granting of a variance will not alter the essential character of the neighborhood. Proposed additional finding of fact three, the, the practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or prior owner. And proposed additional finding of fact four, no other feasible alternative to a variance is available uh, to this petitioner. I, spec I suspect we may have some uh, comments um, from the board on these proposed findings given the, uh, the nature of the discussion. So if anybody has any, any suggestions on those pro proposed findings, um, feel free to speak up. Matthew. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted to suggest uh, as a friendly amendment uh, that we refer to the variance that was approved uh by the previous board in april 2010 that was part of the packet dealing with the um associated neighborhood property uh and in particular i think the reference to um the the quote that i i read earlier into the record uh under a practical difficulty i think that that is important for us to um to have that as a findings of fact as the basis as to why we reached the uh a successful um vote on the application we we could we could reference that application i'm wondering if it's if it would be cleaner to simply say um for proposed additional finding of fact three the practical difficulty is not the result of uh hold on sorry i'm in the wrong place here uh it would be proposed additional finding of fact two the granting of a variance will not alter the essential character of the neighborhood um as evidenced by uh construction that has occurred within that uh, neighborhood um, consistent with, and then I guess we, the certificate of variance for 11 Crescent View Road dated May 20th, 2010. And I'm not really hot on on referencing other applications, but I think that is you know that does offer some substantiation as to as to why we're willing to do this. Um, but I don't know if there are you know thoughts or comments on that. Chair, I have no comment. I think that's that's fine. Uh, I just that. Um, there were points were made during the, um, the hearing. I think this covers that uh, those issues that were addressed. Kevin, what do you what do you think? I see a, a yeah, so I'm I'm the non the non lawyer uh, here. I mean, I think if we if we reference it once, we're effectively referencing the entire thing, which I don't actually have a problem with. It's recorded. It's of record. It's precedent. We're, we clearly there's a recording of this meeting. We clearly have referenced it and and used it as. Um, uh, as material in our consideration. Uh, I mean, I'd almost add it as additional finding of fact five that the board reviewed and considered the certificate of variance and the findings of fact contained therein or something to that effect. Michael. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I don't think that other variance has uh, has any the, the fact that a variance was was granted across the street? I, I understand Matt's argument that uh, it 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 would be unfair to not um, 
approve this variance because the one was approved across the street. But uh, I think this one, and, and I think there was some useful information there, but it's in the record. Um, and and I, I think this application stands on its own. I don't think it, it, it um, I don't think we need to reference the, the, the uh, a variance on, on a, a, another lot, but that's just my opinion. I, I'm and I, I'm comfortable with that myself, Matthew. The we don't let me uh, rephrase my query for you. Um, the reference to the variance is germane for our discussion, and also for the applicant. The rationale that's the, um, the, of the practical difficulty is, in my view, the the, the linchpin for this application. Uh, and then that justifies for the variance. Now, uh, I take the other board members comments that, you know, the, this variance is out there is not directly uh, applicable to the, um, to this application. Um, but on the other hand, there's a, that rationale that a previous board, uh, the, the ZBA um, uh, allowed a variance and, and I accept that. So that's my point. That's why I'm thinking that it's important to include, but you know, I'm only one one member. I just to add something to, to what Matt said. I mean, some of our discussion was the other, you know, sort of the, the 10 homes, the 10 surrounding homes in the neighborhood that is in the other variance application. It's not in this application. And that is something in, in our charge to consider that we did consider. So but, but they they included this as a as as a attachment to their application. So, I, I you know, I, I mentioned earlier, I, I think it's already in the record. I don't think we necessarily need it in the findings, but I don't really care. <laughs> I don't. I don't care that deeply either. I, I like Matt. Like the language of pra practical difficulty and uh, the ordinance. The language about the ordinance um, being enacted after the lot was laid out. I. I, I think that's um, important to include. Okay. Yeah. Why don't we just say that? All right. All right. So let's let's make this as clear as we can for Carmen. Let me just find where. Hold on. Bear with me. All right, so that would be under, let's see, proposed additional finding of fact three, which currently reads the practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or prior owner. And I think what we would add is it, it is the result of a zoning change by the town of Cape Elizabeth subsequent to the construction of, of the home on the property. Does that sound right? Yeah. Okay. So we've got a friendly amendment then to the proposed additional findings of fact. Any other um, thoughts, comments on the uh, proposed findings and the proposed additional findings? If not, I would entertain a motion for approval of the proposed findings of fact, the proposed additional findings of fact with the friendly amendment to proposed additional finding of fact three relative to practical difficulty. Ben. Yeah, on, on the other page, there's also the conclusion, which could also be one additional finding or a conclusion about uh, the practical difficulty. Yeah, I never do turn that page over, do I? I think I did this last meeting too. All right, so we, so we do have a, a conclusion. So we've talked about the proposed findings of fact, the pro proposed additional findings, proposed conclusion being there is no substantial departure from the intent of the ordinance and a literal enforcement of the ordinance would cause a practical difficulty as defined by 30A MRSA section 4353-4-C. So with our friendly amendment, with that addition uh, of, of our proposed conclusion, uh, do we have a, a motion to approve? So moved. All right, we got Michael to move, move that. Second. Second. Kevin, we got a second. Mike Valencourt, and, oh, any discussion, any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, Mike Valencourt in favor. Michael Tatum Wheeland in favor. Aaron Kevin Just in favor. Karen, uh, that was Kevin and Aaron uh, in stereo once again. Colin Powers in favor. Matt Cain in favor. All right, uh, the motion carries. Um,
thank you, Ms. Hill. Uh, thank you, Attorney Danielson. Always good to good to see you, and um, good thank luck you. with it. I hope it go, I hope the project goes well. Thank hey, you thank very you much. Thank, thank you, you for your work and your thoughts and consideration. Thank you. Take care. All right. All right. Uh, Stick with me for just a minute here. All right, we are on to new business item number three to hear the request of Galen and Robert Zimmerman, owners of the property at three roundabout lane map U36 lot 77 to enlarge a non-conforming single family dwelling based on sections 19-4-3.B.4 of the zoning ordinance. Um, do we have Mr. and or uh, Ms. Zimmerman uh, participating here? I, looks like I see you guys on the screen. Are you with us? Can you see us? All right, very good. Yeah, we see you. Yeah. Hold on. Okay. Excellent. Sorry, <laughs> You're welcome to participate via video. Okay. <laughs> you don't necessarily need to. Okay, good, there we go. Good to see you guys. Uh, good evening. Yeah. What's good funny evening. if you're ever gonna get to us? Good evening, yeah, eventually, right? Uh, so yeah, so we will move on to your application and I'll ask um, Ben, our, our code, code enforcement officer to give us a quick, a quick briefing on the application, please. Yes, uh, the Zimmermans presented a, a building permit application to do a vertical expansion on an existing two car garage attached to their house but a portion of that garage is within the 25 foot side setback line. This is uh, a non-conforming lot in the RA zone. And I was trying to, trying to find my document to see exactly how far it is. It's, uh, so the existing, two, the existing attached two car garage is 13 feet from the side property line. And they, and they wanna expand upward on that. And uh, when the, the Zimmermans told me that all their neighbors supported their application, I always chuckle when, when people say that because it's never in my life been true, but this might be the first time in my life that, that that's actually true, that I, I think I received an email from just about every one of their neighbors. So this, this is a first for me. <laughs> that's just because we're so nice. <laughs> I, I did see the emails coming in, and I thought, oh, here we go. and yeah, I was, I was I was surprised as well to see all the all the support. So apparently, and a phone call. You guys are you guys are good neighbors, so that's a good. <laughs> good we start. all try on roundabout. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. Well, I, uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Zimmerman, we'll, we'll turn it over to you then uh, to chat a little bit about your application and and what you're seeking and why you're seeking it, and then we can uh, take it from there. Absolutely, yeah. So uh, what we've been doing is basically renovating the house as it goes, but um, our garage is the last step to it and uh, it is old. And so we're trying to build a new garage and we'd like to expand upwards, build a rec room. We have two kids, they're gonna be teenagers soon. So we're trying to build some family space there um, and build ourselves a nice uh, bedroom to go with that. On the existing footprint. Yeah, it's all on the existing footprint. Um, we're not trying to get closer to the property line. The the neighbor that is closest, his house is actually quite far away from us. We're, we're the ones that are close to the property line. But that is our story. <laughs> thank you, thank you. We may have some additional questions for you. Yeah, no problem. Appreciate the input. Um, any uh, questions uh, from the board for uh, Mr. and Mrs. Zimmerman, Zimmerman at this point in time? Michael and then Kevin. Yeah, just a quick one. Um, I, I see this, um, I don't know if it's a, I don't know if you took this photo with a drone or what, but um, it's, uh, it's, it's great to show us um, sort of, what it's going to do to or potentially do to views uh which is as you know some one of the things we have to consider can you, can you just um and, and i know that i know that street is 
is relatively flat. I don't think many of your neighbors are sitting sort of higher and, and looking at the ocean, but can you can you comment a little further on on the views that this yeah that uh, the reason block? oh sorry yeah, the the reason why that is a drone by the way um, our neighbor across the street was our biggest concern she just renovated her house and went up um, four views she actually can see right over our house as you that's can see. her view um, and the the reason why we're expanding over the garage is because it really doesn't affect anyone else um, and we were trying to show but the build would actually block for her. Um, she didn't have any concerns with it and actually approved it as far as I know. She called Ben, um, I believe. Yeah. Okay, great. That, well, that, that's very helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Mike. Uh, Kevin, I think you're up, right? Yeah, just one, one real quick thing. Hey, guys. Um, <laughs> Uh, the garage, uh, are you building over it or are you actually tearing it all down and then replacing the, the garage? garage is, is old and we're tearing it down and we need to build a new garage. Obviously, okay. we need to build a stronger garage. But yeah. Okay, excellent. I just I wanted to confirm that was the case on yeah. the specific ordinance and, and the way the application was yeah. set up. So cool. The foundation is perfect. It's uh, we are adding an extra footing with a with steel beam to support the weight inside the garage. So I don't think we'd have an issue with the foundation there. Great, thanks. Yeah. Uh, other questions for the uh, applicants for Mr. and Mrs. Zimmerman at, at this point? All right, I don't see any. Uh, ben, you mentioned that you, you'd gotten some feedback uh, via email, all supportive of, of the project. Yes, and several of them were forwarded to you. Uh, a couple more came in after business hours today. So there's, uh, there's a couple that you're not aware of, but they've, uh, they've all been in support, I believe. Maybe I think seven emails total and one phone call, all in support of the application. Okay, You've great. lived here twenty years. <laughs> that doesn't mean they're all going to support it. Yeah, yeah. We're nice. <laughs> great. Any um any members of of the public on with us tonight who might want to uh, comment on. The Zimmerman application. Again, I, I don't see anybody, but Ben, if you could just confirm that for me. Confirmed. Okay. All right. Very good. Well, uh, let's uh, then then close this and go to um, board discussion. Uh, and we may have some additional questions for you, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Zimmerman. Um, thoughts from the board? Gavin. I would just throw out there, views were really my only consideration with this. I've spent a fair amount of time on this street, um, uh, you know, between the Zimmerman's house and kind of the other uh, side down roundabout. Um, and, you know, having the neighbors be supportive of the views, I really see no issue, um, no other issues with this application in terms of the other criteria that we're looking at. So I'm, I'm supportive of it. Matthew. Thank you, Chair. I just had a couple of questions for Ben. Um, on the um, building permit, the height is 35 feet. That's one of the features that you have to consider. Yes. Um, on the drawing where we look at the pictures, uh, maybe which one? Probably that one there. That, that one here, this is the, um, the the version that's stapled, it's a two page or three pages. I just qu query, um, when there's a little portion that's an, attached to the house, to the garage, the, um, that little, looks like it's a ramp. Is that part of the structure or is that not considered part of the structure for setback purposes? Is it, which part are you referring it's, it's to? It's a ramp, Sorry, that's, this, that's a ramp. Uh, that there, there is a, an existing side ramp already, yeah. Are you referring to the yeah. side or the front, the back? Uh, uh, yeah, that's that's my understanding is that that is existing now. Yes. And so that wouldn't be it's not being touched. part of this application. No, and that, that is all within the setback. If you're talking about the stairs. No, we're or, talking about the ramp. Oh, uh, the ramp. 
the, yeah, that's the, ramp, the, the ramp on the side is existing. Yeah. Non-conforming, but not a violation, right? Right. The right words, right? Um, yes. It was here when we bought it. So I'm just querying, why, why, this is just a query. I mean, you know, the, the applicants could have expanded to the edge of the railing. We could. No, why is that, Ben? No. Well, uh, decks decks have lesser setbacks. De decks and landings have lesser setbacks than enclosed structures. And you, so the ramp is what you is your interpretation of, of a um, of a deck. Yes. Okay. Um, and so the overhang that's on this drawing here uh, is that in the setback or or is this considered? It's not an issue because it's it's um, over the ramp. That front part is just decorative. It's yeah. like a it's a decorative insert basically. With, it's like a little roof. Yeah, but it's yeah. And we're, we're allowed we're allowed two foot oh. overhangs into oh. the setback. Thank you, man. That, that's it. That's all my queries. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> What, what else do we have? I think we 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 may be into a uh, motion making time. Um, stick with me. There's a lot of paperwork here tonight. Sounds like uh, the, the board is uh, willing to entertain a motion to approve the request of Galen and Robert Zimmerman, owners of the property at Three Roundabout Lane, map U36, lot 77, to enlarge a non conforming single family dwelling based on sections 19 4 3.b4 of the zoning ordinance. Anybody up for making the motion? So moved. I, Matt, I, I think you beat Colin just barely, but we'll call Colin a second. We've got the motion by Matthew, um, second by Colin. Uh, further discussion from the board. Hearing none, Mike Valancourt in favor of the motion. Michael just waved. Mike Adam uh, uh <laughs> in favor. Evan just in favor. That came in favor. In favor. Yeah, see it happens every time. Colin Powers in favor. <laughs> oh, just for the record, both uh, Aaron and Matthew are in favor as well. Uh, didn't the, the mute kills me here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, good. So uh, the motion carries. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Zimmerman, congratulations on a on a renovation in this uh, economy and this whole thing. Yeah. Um, uh, this is just the beginning of your uh, your process, I'm sure, your adventure, we'll call it. Um, we do have to run through some uh, quick findings of fact. We'd ask you to stick around just until we do that to ensure that we don't have any additional questions for you. And then you will be off and running and working with Ben to, uh, to get this project, uh, get this party started. Hold on just a second. Yeah. All right, here we go. So the uh, the motion um, to approve the application has has been approved by the zoning board. We have uh, findings of fact to work through. Proposed finding of fact one: the property is a non-conforming lot in the RA zone. The property contains a single-family dwelling. Proposed finding of fact two: the existing house does not meet the side setback requirement. The owner would like to reconstruct and expand the attached garage upward on the same footprint. Proposed additional finding of fact one, the Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, the location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties and the impact on views. Proposed additional finding of fact two, the proposed structure will not increase the nonconformity of the existing structure. Proposed additional finding of fact three, the proposed structure is in compliance with the setback requirement to the greatest practical practical extent and proposed additional finding fact four, the building reconstruction meets the setback to the greatest practical extent 
based on the criteria in section 19-4-3.b.2 and b.4 in the zoning ordinance. Um, thoughts on proposed findings and proposed additional findings. All right. All I, I would move we accept them as written. Perfect. Perfect. Do we have a second? Second. All right. We've got a second by Aaron to approve to approve the proposed findings and the proposed the proposed additional findings. Matthew. Yeah. I know it's late. I just want to double check. Uh, under number four on the additional finding, is that the right ordinance section at the bottom? It's B2 and B4. You think so, Ben? Okay, we're we're getting we're getting a nod from our code enforcement officer, so I'm gonna uh, defer yes. to him. Yeah, B four is the section for expansion, and that refers back to B two for the criteria. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. Good question. All right, then. Uh, all in favor? Mike Valencourt in favor. Mike. Kevin Donald Justin in favor. Kevin Justin in favor. Sorry, Kevin. Aaron Moser in favor. Colin Powers in favor. Matt Kane in favor. All right. You folks are all set. Good luck with everything. Thank uh, you so much. Thank you for your time with us tonight and uh, good luck. Thank you for your time. Thank yep. you. Take care. Great night. Thank you. <laughs>
won't be won't be any higher. We're basically using the existing footprint, if not a little bit less of it. I think it puts us at 60. It's the same setback to the brook, 68 feet, I think, um, as opposed to the 75 feet, which is what we're looking for. So and it's a it's a prefab shed, so it'll be delivered, built, pre-built, not built on site. I, I saw the uh, the photos that you in, you included of that. All right. Thank you. Anything else you want to add at the moment? I mean, we, we will ask you questions if we have any. Yeah, we did get um, we got a verbal okay from our neighbor um, uh, at number fourteen, uh, Steffi Cox. She we didn't get anything documented or, or you know or recorded, but she was she said she had no problem with what we were going to do. Um, it's it is basically just replacing uh, the old garage with a new shed. Um, there's not a whole lot to it, really. So that, that's about all I need to add. All right, thank you, uh, Ben. I did uh, receive an, uh, an email from Steffi Cox at 14 State Avenue uh, expressing her support for the application. Cool. And I didn't receive any any other correspondence. Okay. Great, thank you. Um, we'll move into uh, questions um, for the applicants, and then we'll see if we have any uh, any input from the public. Uh, Kevin, I think your hand popped up first. Yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you for your your patience uh, this evening. Um, just real quick, the only question I had was um, in looking at the plan, uh, I guess the, the mortgage survey you have, um, it looks like you have steps from a back vestibule or a back deck that lead toward the garage um, area. And I was wondering, one, if that was the case, and two, if that would, those steps and, and the need for a landing pad there would have prevented you from pushing that shed any further forward on the property. Right. So that original survey that's from um, when we bought the house or you know, we received it when we bought the house, uh, subsequent to that, we've put a large addition off the back. So we no longer, we, our family room that we're in right now goes just about to that 70 foot, five foot line, which is why the shed's actually gonna be a little smaller than the garage was because it impacted that. Great. That yeah, that answers. I, I was seeing a little bit of conflict with the survey and with what looked like the picture. So um, yeah, about 10, 10 or 11 years ago, we put a family room okay. off the back. Great. Thank you. That, that's all I have. I think fairly straightforward application otherwise. Michael. Yeah. Hi. Can you give us a, a sense of how close is that existing garage to the to the side property line, and and how how close will the the shed be? Yeah, that was about. I want to see. It's the same. It's the same distance as is as exists right now. Okay. Um, I'm well, you grab grew it on me. Yeah, I did. I did a little sketch. Right there. What's that? Uh, four foot seven inches. It's okay. really light on the drawing. I see it. Copied, yeah. but it's four foot seven. So it is, it's close to that property line. And so that's the existing and that's what we would be. So it, yeah, so it's, it's not getting any closer. And it, it, Correct. Okay. Perfect. So I got, thank you. Any additional questions for our- I do, real quick. Yep. Is, is this going on a slab? Is that what's going on? No, so what, what I got, have to do for this one, that there, there's an old existing slab that's all broken. Um, I'm going to end up demoing that and using it for backfill. Basically, I'm going to build a little uh, segmental retaining wall, about 18 inches tall is all I need. Um, and I'm going to fill it with crushed stone. So this, this uh, the whole unit's going to sit on a crushed stone base. Yeah. Okay. And the retaining wall will be within that 68 feet. It's the It'll same, be right. yeah, the retaining wall will be at the same footprint as the size of the, uh, the shed. All right, thank you. Uh, this is probably more for Ben, but I'm curious why this is coming in front of us. If shed's considered movable. It, it's uh, because it's not 75 feet from Trout Brook. 
uh, I, I can't approve the replacement of a structure within, within 75 feet, within a 75 foot shoreland zoning setback. Okay. Uh, I could, based on the side setback, I, have, I, could, I could approve this with the four foot, seven foot side setback, it, but it's the 69 feet on, on the rear that I can't do. I think my question is, is it anything or I'm just, it's really not really pertinent to this, but is it? It's just like the, the intent of shoreland zoning is that if, if people are tearing down something and replacing it, they're supposed to try to meet the setback. And, mm -hmm. and, that's, and, and that's what your charge is here to see if it's practical for them to meet the 75 foot setback than they're supposed to. If it's not practical for them to meet the setback, then they can be allowed to keep right. it. Right. But, but I think what my question is, we have a more permanent situation that exists right now with a poured concrete foundation. And they're going to, uh, you know, a semi-permeable anyway, fill, and then with a pre-built shed placed upon them. I'm just curious why if that, that's considered a structure then, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's it's still considered a structure, even though it's uh, more you know more of a shed and less of a foundation. It it still is a structure with a foundation, but but yeah, it's, it's just for my education that would trigger this shoreline zone. It, it it still would. It's still it's still considered to be a structure. Fair enough. Great, right, thanks. Matthew, go for it. Thank you, Chair. Ben, this, uh, I had a query. I seem to recall that there's a setback requirement for, um, I can't recall the, the term now, but it's non-residential structures. Um, I seem to recall that there was, a, someone wanted to put a, like a shed at the front of their pro front corner of their property. And the, the question is um, whether it had a living arrangement in it. But do you, does that ring a bell to you? Uh, not yet. You're talking about like an accessory structure. Accessory Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So like that? I, I, th I think that's right. So it, we're not calling this replacement or reconstruction structure an accessory structure. Right. This is just a, a yeah, gener yeah. general concept of a structure. It just so happens to be a shed that's replacing a permanent garage at one time. Yeah, it, it is, it's an accessory structure by definition. It's not an accessory dwelling unit or, or anything like that. But yeah, any, any shed or detached garage would be considered an accessory structure. So the applicant does not lose any rights replacing the current structure with a prefabricated shed. Correct. The, so in the, it, it means the same, you know, them doing an eight by 12 prefab shed on a stone based from a zoning perspective means the exact same thing if they poured, a, you know, four foot frost okay. wall foundation with a slab and stick built an eight by 12 structure on top of it. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Aaron. One, yeah, one just one question. How how large is the structure now? About nine by twelve. We're losing about. Oh, okay, so you go from nine by twelve to eight by twelve. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, just slightly smaller. Okay. Yeah, I guess just on the on the diagram, it looks like it's going to be a big difference, but it won't be. What happened was we had a one car garage and we had to cut the front part off when we put the addition on. <laughs> oh, I so see. we already okay. lost part of the garage. That's so not showing on. Yeah, it I keeps getting that. smaller and smaller, which okay, living kind of space more important than garage. Good. <laughs> All right. Any additional questions for the applicants at this point? All right, I'm not seeing any. So uh, any members of the public available to comment uh, on this particular application? I don't see anybody else on, Ben. Do you see anybody? I don't. All right, okay. 
Well, we will uh, we'll close this then and move on to uh, board discussion. Um, uh, we will uh, certainly uh, reserve the right to pose any questions to you to the extent they come up, come up as we consider this as a board. Um, what's the what are the thoughts of uh, the board members tonight on this application? Michael. Yeah, I just, after uh, after my rant about surveys earlier, I, I just wanted to <laughs> wanted to uh, point out this is a a mortgage survey, but but what we have here is replacement in essentially the exact same location. So so it's uh, I I think this is fine. Um, I I think I think this application makes complete sense, and uh, I'm I'm in support of it. Thanks. Yeah, I, I'm in support as well. Um, I actually think the uh, uh, potential for soil erosion gets better by not having the foundation as opposed to having the, the crushed stone and um, probably is an improvement on the property. And I understand why it has to come here. And it makes sense. Uh, you know, you have to have that rule with the 75 foot uh, setback. Um, but, you know, I, I have no issue with this. All right, well, it's, it sounds to me like the board is prepared to entertain the following motion, which is to approve the request of Todd Brideson and Rachel Flaxman, owners of the property at 16 State Avenue, map U28, lot 26, to replace their garage with a shed based on section 19-4-4.B.3 of the zoning ordinance. Anybody care to make that motion? So moved. All right, we've got Kevin, we've got Aaron as a second. I'll second. Great, thank you. Uh, discussion uh, from the board on, on this motion. I, I too am in, in favor. I think this makes uh, makes perfect sense for all the reasons that, uh, that Kevin and uh, Michael articulated. Um, I'll, I'll vote in favor. Kevin just in favor. Aaron Mosier in favor. Colin Powers in favor. Matt Cain in favor. Michael Tatum Wheeland in favor. All right, good, good. So the motion carries. As as you both have heard, uh, I think exactly three other times this evening, uh, if you've been on for the whole time, we're just going to run through some findings of fact. We'd ask you to stick around for that. Um, and then I think we can all call it a night. Um, congratulations on the approval. Um, as, as far as the uh, proposed findings of fact, we have proposed finding of fact one, the property is a non-conforming lot in the RC zone. The property contains a single family dwelling and garage. Proposed finding of fact two, the existing garage does not meet the 75 foot setback from Trout Brook. The owner would like to replace the garage with a shed without getting closer to Trout Brook. Proposed additional finding of fact one, the zoning board of appeals has considered the size of the lot the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, the location of other structures on, on the property on, and on adjacent properties and the impact on views. Proposed additional finding of fact two, the proposed structure will not increase the nonconformity of the existing structure. Proposed additional finding of fact three, the proposed structure is in compliance with the setback requirement to the greatest practical extent. Proposed additional finding of fact four, the building reconstruction meets the setback to the greatest practical extent based on the criteria in section 19-4-4.B.2 and B.3 in the zoning ordinance. Um, any comments from the board on the proposed findings of fact and the proposed additional findings of fact? All right, uh, hearing none, uh, we can entertain a motion to approve the proposed findings of fact and the proposed additional findings fact is read into the record. Do we have a motion? So moved. So moved. Oh, I'll oh. second. We've got Matthew uh, on the motion. We've got Kevin on the second. Uh, discussion of the proposed findings. Okay, hearing none, all in favor. Mike Valancourt in favor. Michael Tadema Wheeland in favor. Aaron Mosier in favor. Kevin Just in favor. Colin Powers in favor. Matt Cain in favor. All right, that does it. We've approved the application. We've approved the uh, findings of fact. Uh, thank you both for hanging with us tonight and uh, good luck with the project. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, for everybody, for your time. And Ben, your daughter is really cute. Yeah. <laughs> you should definitely put that uh, guitar over the top of it still. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, guess. <laughs> I just. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I will. <laughs> Uh, we're, we're, we're signing off here. <laughs> Thank you very much, all. We appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Take care. And, and uh, as, as far as our, the board's business, I think that pretty well sums it up, Ben. I, I saw an email from you, I think, earlier today that we're, we're back uh, live come next month. Do we have um, any applications on the horizon? There, there are one or two tire kickers. So we, we may be having a meeting next month. I'm not positive yet. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna be back in person. All right. Okay. Um, anything else from any other members of the board? Or shall we call it a night? All night. All right. Very good. We'll consider this adjourned. Thank you all. all right. Have Thank a night. Tonight. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Great. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye. Wait, no, go sign off, go sign off. Wait. No, no, no. Hello, my name is Bridget. I like to 